Hello everyone! I'm here again today with yet another Throwback Thursday video. Today we're looking at the life of a very famous and influential one-time Muhlenberg Countyan. Thomas Coleman DuPont was a member of the prestigious DuPont family, the same family that created and ran the company known for developing such commonly used items as nylon, lycra, teflon, mylar, kevlar, and much more. Thomas Coleman was part of the family's Kentucky branch. He was born in 1863 in Louisville, and as a young man, he moved to Central City, where his father, Biederman DuPont, had founded the Central Coal and Iron Company. Central Coal and Iron was one of Central City's major industries in the latter half of the 1800s. In fact, Central City became known as such because of the Central Coal and Iron Company being located there. The town had previously been known as Stroud City, but was renamed in honor of the Coal and Iron Company, Central City. The business was headquartered on Broad Street at the current location of the post office parking lot and operated coal mining facilities nearby in the area near what is now Food Giant, Case Mill Supply, and DQ. When Thomas Coleman moved here, even though his father owned the company, he started humbly as an apprentice miner. He loaded coal and drove mules along with the other miners. However, during his time here, he worked his way up the ranks to eventually become superintendent of the company. He lived at the corner of West 3rd Avenue and Walnut Street in Central City. His former house still stands there today. By virtue of his involvement in the coal industry in Muhlenberg County, Thomas Coleman became friends with Thistle Cottage's own W.G. Duncan Sr., even though they operated different, some might even say competing, companies. However, these portraits of Mr. DuPont, autographed by the subject for his friend, Mr. Duncan, prove this to be true. Mr. Duncan appears to have been well-liked in the community based on comments made by his contemporaries. However, that wasn't enough. When he ran for mayor of Central City in 1892, in the very first election for that position, he was defeated by Dr. Jim McDowell. After this defeat, Mr. DuPont didn't stay here for much longer. He eventually made his way to Delaware, where the family business was headquartered, and along with two of his cousins, purchased that family business. That's where Mr. DuPont really made a name for himself. He served as president of the DuPont Company, which at the time focused primarily on explosives, from 1902 until 1915. During that time, the company established two of the first industrial labs in the United States, working with cellulose, lacquer, and other similar items. With these successes under his belt, Mr. DuPont also purchased major hotels across the region, including the world-famous Waldorf Astoria in New York City, which he purchased in 1918, as well as other major hotels in New York, D.C., Atlantic City, Philadelphia, and other cities. Mr. DuPont owned other buildings as well, most notably the Equitable Building in New York City, which housed the Equitable Life Insurance Company Mr. DuPont had acquired in 1913. The company's building had been destroyed by fire in 1912, so he built a newer, larger one in 1915 to replace the previous facility. The new Equitable Building was the world's largest by floor space at the time of its completion. In fact, it actually contributed to the city's decision to install the first modern zoning restrictions in 1916 because the building's size and shape meant that it blocked sunlight from the surrounding area, thereby driving property values in the area down. Even so, by the 1920s, the Equitable Building was the most valuable in the city. In his home state of Delaware, Mr. DuPont proposed and began construction of the so-called DuPont Highway to run the length of the state, that is now US 13 and 113, major transportation routes through Delaware. Additionally, Mr. DuPont's defeat in Central City's mayoral race in 1892 was only a minor setback for his political career. He became active in politics again in Delaware in the early 1900s, and he actually served two partial terms in the US Senate for that state. He was appointed to fill an unexpired term for a resigning senator from July 1921 until November 1922, then he was elected to his own seat in 1924. That time, he served from March 1925 to December 1928 when he resigned due to health problems. Mr. DuPont died in Wilmington, Delaware on November 11, 1930 from cancer of the larynx. In all fairness, while we have extolled all of his achievements here, 
It isn't all good when you talk about the life of Mr. DuPont. Like many other successful businessmen of his time, he certainly had his fair share of critics. The DuPont company was accused of holding a monopoly in their industry and was broken up in antitrust actions during the last part of Thomas Coleman's presidency of the company. And he was a defendant in multiple lawsuits over real estate deals in Florida during his later life. Most notably, however, Mr. DuPont was implicated, although not convicted, in the Teapot Dome bribery case in the 1920s, a major scandal when Secretary of the Interior Albert Bacon Fall went to prison for taking bribes from oil companies to provide them low-cost access to petroleum reserves without going through proper channels. While Mr. DuPont's life had its share of ups and downs, there is no doubt he is one of the most famous former Muhlenberg Countyans, and his work, here and elsewhere, made a major impact on the lives of his fellow men. That's all we have for today's Throwback Thursday video. We hope you've enjoyed this brief look at Mr. DuPont's life. Join us next week for another peek at our history. Have a great week!